<laughs> Good morning, I'm Brad Larson from, I'm a principal scientist at Biotech Instruments. So what I'm going to be doing today is talking about a project that we, um, that we performed, a uh, collaborative project with the, uh, our partners at Ferrari and uh, using the uh, uh, Elplasia uh, 3D4 well spheroid microplates. So the goal of the project was to demonstrate uh, how the plate technology, the 3D spheroid plate technology could be combined with the imaging capabilities that we have at Biotech Instruments using our Citation 5 to, uh, to demonstrate how you could perform a project that was looking at monitoring uh, induction of apoptotic activity uh, in uh, the cell models that we were using and then again um, having the cells uh, aggregated into 3D spheroids and then imaged with the, uh, with the citation. Okay, so let's get started. So we used uh, two different uh, cell models for the project. Uh, HGT-116, which is a colorectal cancer cell model, and uh, HGT-1080s, which is a fibroblast, um, uh, uh, cancer fibroblast uh, cell model. And what we did was to uh, resuspend the cells, obviously, uh, and then they were plated into the, uh, into the 384 well microplates. Uh, at a volume you see of 50 microliters. Uh, so basically, uh, with the concentration that we were using that you see here, approximately 50 cells would settle into each of the micropores in, um, in each of the wells. Approximately uh, 225 micropores are in each well. Uh, so again, with this concentration, dividing it out amongst all the pores, you get approximately 50 cells uh, going into each uh, into each. Uh, microspace. So then after that the, uh, the plates were put into our tissue culture incubator for approximately um, two days and that allowed the cells to aggregate into nice spheroids. I'll show you some images that we captured uh, of those uh, spheroids that were formed over time. And then what we did was to dose the cells with two different uh, drugs, uh, doxorubicin and oridonin, again to in induce uh, apoptosis over time. And then what we did with the uh, with the citation was to place the plate into the citation where we can then control uh, temperature and uh, CO2 levels. Uh, so and then to, in order to enable live cell imaging over the time period that we uh, that we wanted to look at. Um, we, you, we performed, we used a 4x objective uh, for that, so obviously you don't need high, uh, high magnification to perform the imaging. Uh, with the plate, we did a 2x2 two two montage, which gave us a, a clear uh, uh, final image of the whole well, which was stitched uh, together with the software. And then the imaging was performed with just right field to look at the entire spheroids. Uh, with a uh, Herx um, stain with a DAPI channel to get a, a total cell uh, image and then uh, the GFP um, imaging channel was basically to monitor apoptosis um, induction. Uh, okay, so moving on, I'm just going to give you a little bit of background with the imagery that we were using uh, to, um, uh, to capture the images with the plate. This is our uh, Citation 5, again from Biotech. So this is a combination of a, um, an imager and uh, a microplate uh, reader, so a cell imaging multimode reader. It gives you a lot of capabilities. Uh, you can image uh, in a number of different um, channels with uh, be that fluorescence, bright field, color bright field, or phase contrast uh, imaging. Like I mentioned, it's a combination uh, instrument, so we have our hybrid uh, technology. So that means, again, not only is it a cell imager, but a microplate reader. So you can perform uh, the imaging with the inverted uh, microscope that's, that would be underneath the plate stage. And then you can also have uh, monochromator-based uh, microplate reading or filter-based uh, microplate reading. We can also have a laser inside, so it gives you a lot of capabilities to do a lot of different types of uh, um, detection uh, of what you would want to do with, uh, with the cells that you're, that you're looking at. Okay, uh, a little bit more about the uh, about the micro uh, microscopic capabilities. Uh, you can see again, it's an, an inverted uh, fluorescence microscope. We use 
um, imaging filter cubes that you see here. You can have up to four uh, in the imager at one time, uh, ranging from one and a quarter up to 60x um, objectives. You can have um, uh, four different filter cubes in the instrument uh, at one time. So uh, if you wanted to, let's say, image uh, in the DAPI channel, um, GFP, RFP, Texas Red, you can do all those in one uh, in one step. Uh, and also I mentioned the, the bright field um, capabilities as well. It has a six objective turret. So basically, once you get the objectives in the instrument, you most likely will not have to change them out uh, once, they're, uh, once they're set up. Uh, we use a 16-bit six, uh, Sony CCD uh, camera, so it gives you a high uh, level of um, sensitivity with uh, each of the pixels that are captured uh, in each of the images, so you can have up to 65,000 different um, uh, fluorescence levels or, or bright field levels uh, called for each pixel, so again, it gives you a lot of flexibility and sensitivity. Uh, with, uh, with the imaging that's, uh, that takes place. You have some other different capabilities uh, that you can do with the software. Uh, we can do, if you're using uh, 3D cell culture, um, such as uh, we were doing here, you can perform Z stacking, so you can capture images in multiple Z planes. And then you can do what we call a Z projection. This is wide field microscopy, so we perform a Z projection, which gives you a crisper image. Um, after all of the uh, all of the images are um, gone through different algorithms that we have to give you a final uh, image that should give you better uh, analysis capabilities. Uh, we can also do um, live imaging, like I mentioned, which again is a, will be uh, uh, explained in a little bit. So again, you can look at if you have an assay that you're expecting a change in uh, fluorescence levels over time, be that up or down, that, you know, that can also be done um, uh, in one experiment mode. Uh, we can do the montaging and the stitching again, like I mentioned, we did a two by two. So you can capture the four images, they're automatically stitched together and give you the final uh, image um, that you see there. Uh, again, obviously it's very important um, these days to do to be able to do live cell ima uh, imaging. So we have the ability to, um, to control uh, temperature. The Citation 5 can go up to 65 degrees Celsius. We can also sparge in with our gas control module, uh, CO2 um, or uh, nitrogen if you were looking at hypoxia studies. Um, if you're looking at assays that have a very fast um, uh, turnover in signal, uh, such as uh, calcium uh, imaging or other or others, you can have an injection uh, module built in so that the plate is already in the, uh, the reading of the imaging chamber. You inject in. Uh, uh, getting now into the actual uh, project that we performed. So again, like I mentioned, uh, the the cells were dispensed into the the wells of the microplates and then aggregated over time. So this is just with bright field. Uh, imaging, so you can see an example of one of the tiles uh, with the 4x objective that um, is captured, and you can see the spheroids in each of the individual microspaces. And then this is the final uh, stitch image that uh, that you would see um, at the end. So it gives you a nice, uh, you know, easy capability to monitor the aggregation of the of the cells into the spheroids um, over time, to make sure that they're ready to uh, to use in your final uh, assay that you would want to perform. How you do it is you load your sample in Okay, then the again, like I mentioned, what we wanted to do was first uh, be able to uh, to be able to see uh, the um, uh, the individual spheroids in a fluorescence uh, mode to be able to use this to place an object mask around the uh, around the object. So we added a Herx dye, obviously that's a live cell uh, nuclear stain. Uh, it works very well even with uh, 3D spheroids. Um, so obviously uh, enters into the cell. Uh, it's a DNA intercalator, so it stains all the nuclei blue. So that basically gives us the ability to um, to determine where these uh, spheroids are in each of the microspaces um, in each of the uh, in each of the wells. Then what we did was, as I mentioned, we dosed the um, the spheroids with uh, two different. Um, compounds with either the oridonin or the doxorubicin uh, to induce apoptotic activity. And then, so what you're seeing here is an example of the HD1080 cells 
that were dosed with 400 nanomolar doxorubicin. And this is an example of uh, a stitched image that was captured after 24 hours of treatment and then after 48 hours of treatment. And what we were doing is we were adding a, um, a live cell uh, apoptotic uh, fluorescence probe. Uh, this is from a company called Abcam. So it, uh, it looks at, uh, it binds basically upon external uh, exposure of phosphatidylserine. Um, so you see a dramatic increase in green fluorescence. Uh, um, when uh, on uh, induction of apoptosis and then as the cells move further along into necrosis the fluorescence then um, tails off uh, once again so you can see here we have a moderate you know low to moderate induction of apoptosis in the spheroids after 24 hours in a much more dramatic um, induction of, of uh, apoptotic activity after four hours and basically this would be um, an overlay of images so again you have uh, total cells within each spheroid captured in the DAPI channel and then you have overlaid the um, the fluorescence that's captured in the green channel from the apoptosis and then you have the composite image that you see uh, that you see here so then what we did, obviously, you know, we have the images of the spheroids, but that, which is great, but we want to be able to quantify apoptotic activity. So basically what we do is use our Gen 5 software, which not only is used to uh, control the imager, but also to perform the cell analysis. And uh, what we can do is use uh, are, uh, we can do either image analysis, so look at fluorescence from the entire image, but what we wanted to do here was basically quantify the fluorescence strictly from the spheroids and ignore everything else. So we can use our cell analysis um, tools and uh, you can see here there's a number of, um, there's a number of uh, um, primary uh, analysis parameters, advanced options that basically are used to allow the software to see the spheroid not as just a bunch of small cells but as a single object. Um, so the minimum and the maximum object size you can see here are, are uh, raised so that would be higher than you would use for a typical single cell. So again that the, the, the spheroids are seen as, as um, single objects. And then what we did was because at sometimes if you're uh, let's say uh, uh, dispensing uh, manually you may not because of the way that you were dispensing you may not necessarily have uh, even um, spheroid formation um, amongst all of the microspaces so what we did was we, we um, added a subpopulation analysis to basically eliminate any spheroids that were smaller in size to get a more statistically uh, relevant um, sample from, from each well. Mm -hmm. And then we performed a second subpopulation analysis using uh, the GFP channel. These first were using the DAPI channel as you can see here. This last one is using the GFP channel again to quantify mean fluorescence from each object that was uh, statistically above uh, the background level of fluorescence in the GFP channel. Those were, were um, called uh, apoptotic um, spheroids. Okay, so uh, this is an example then of, of using all those parameters that I just mentioned, uh, what basically the software does. So if you look at the left panel over here, uh, using the primary um, analysis criteria, you would have object masks placed around basically all the spheroids um, that are in each well. Now you can see because of some of the properties of the um, of the plates and um, some of the uh, the, the dispensing um, um, parameters that I just talked to you about, some there are some object masks that are. Um, mistakenly placed around the dividers of the microspaces, which which can happen when using you know fluorescence uh, microscopy. So what again we can do is with the subpopulation then we can eliminate those and now anything that's shown in red is eliminated from our analysis. What are uh, the object masses that are in yellow or gold are what are included. So again, that gives us a, a better uh, statistical sample that's going to give us more consistent results and a better idea of really what's going on with it's, spheroids it's done automatically. that are in the well. I'm sorry? It's done automatically. This is done automatically using all of these parameters yeah, which you set up and then you basically so press go off. and okay. then these object masks are going to be automatically created. So it takes the subjectivity out of the analysis 
um, and it gives you a better, you know, a more relevant uh, 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 analysis that's performed. Okay, so that's with the first subpopulation analysis. So this would be our total spheroid number then that would be included uh, in, in the well. And then finally we have the uh, identification of the optonic spheroid. So again, that was looking at uh, changes in the mean fluorescence in the GFP channel uh, from each of the wells. And then these would be the objects that are um, included or, or indicated as apoptotic um, spheroids. Uh, and then basically what we can do is perform a simple ratio of the number of uh, apoptotic spheroids counted uh, compared to the total number of spheroids counted. And then we, can, we have a simple percentage of the apoptotic spheroids. Okay, so then what we do is, is I took all of those uh, numbers that were generated by Gen 5 and then uh, plotted all of the data. So you can see, again, from the kinetic imaging that we performed over the 48 hours with, this is just showing 10 micromolar um, uh, compounds. Uh, this would be, um, uh, this would be with the different, uh, the two different cell types, the two different compounds. Over time, you can see the induction of apoptosis. Uh, that was more uh, prevalent in the ACT 116s with uh, with uh, with each of the compounds that were tested, and then you can see here what's interesting is that the HT 1080s are more um, permeant to the compound, uh, so it needs a, a, a longer time. You can see it's just starting to show a low level of uh, apoptosis uh, induction at the end of the 48 hours. So again, it gives you the ability to just, this is just uh, spheroid numbers, um, apoptotic spheroid numbers that were counted. And then we can perform a normalization, again, compared to the total number of spheroids that were counted. And you can see a much dramatic, you know, a quite dramatic increase in apoptosis, again, with the ACT116 cells with each drug. Again, more um, uh, impervient with the HT1080s. And then finally, you see a low level of apoptosis um, uh, that's being induced at the end of the, of the 48 hours. So a very simple way to, to track apoptotic activity with the combination of the, um, of the plates and the, um, uh, and the imaging and the analysis. And then finally, we can also look uh, at, if you did want to look at, um, you know, basically the traces of, the, of the, the live cell over time, we can also pick uh, a specific uh, point in time, this is 48 hours, and then look at the dose responses um, from the different compounds again to see how uh, to see how that uh, how that's uh, comparing. So that's uh, that's basically the explanation. If you want more uh, information, the application note is um, currently live and published on the Biotech website. You can see the um, uh, the link right here. This probably isn't going to show up too well on the camera, but this can be. Uh, 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 found on the, uh, the resources uh, part of the biotech uh, website. So I thank you very much for joining me today and uh, to, uh, uh, to perform further uh, um, collaborations uh, with, uh, with uh, Ferrari and with uh, Alpazia in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.